Ah, your trusty sidearm. The semi-automatic 1911 A1 pistol. Reliable and accurate. It's quite useful at mid to long ranges with both hands and mid to short ranges with one hand. The magazine holds seven bullets. Always keep it loaded. The semi-automatic P08 pistol. The Nazis love this weapon. If you get your hands on it in the field, be sure to show them the love back. As with other German pistols, the P08 has a larger magazine, but is slightly less accurate. The P-38 semi-automatic. The choice of many German officers. Good to carry if you're ever in disguise. It has a slightly larger magazine than your 1911 pistol. But the trade-off is less accuracy at medium and long ranges. Well, this is quite the treat. Your friend Marcel made this custom for you in his workshop. Talk about something that goes boom. It's easily the most lethal sidearm we have at close range. Though, it comes with a massive bullet spread. There's also an intense kickback when firing quickly one-handed. Either hold it with both hands while firing, or take a short pause between each shot to account for the recoil. Spent shells can be ejected by simply jerking the weapon in any direction. After new shells are loaded, the barrels can be reset in the same one-handed way. A Gewehr 43, but with an added sniper scope. An extremely effective weapon. It works the same as the regular Gewehr, but the addition of the scope helps you target long-range enemies. This Gewehr is the only semi-automatic weapon in your arsenal with optical magnification, giving it quite a unique feel for a scoped weapon. While lethal at any range, the M1903 sniper rifle is simply the best weapon for long-range combat. Hold it with both hands for perfect accuracy. As with all bolt-action rifles, the bolt has to be racked after every shot. This is a K98K with a sniper scope. It has the same extreme lethality as a regular K98K, but with handy optics that let you see those pesky bad guys who are far away. The K98K. In the right hands, a weapon of extreme lethality. Every shot of the K-98K is perfectly accurate when you hold it two-handed. Remember, all bolt action weapons require racking the bolt between every shot. But the bolt can be racked with either hand. The Gewehr 43. An impressive weapon. It requires a bit more effort to reload than the Garand, but it comes with a large magazine. It's just as accurate as the other semi-automatic weapons, but rapidly firing the Gewehr's entire magazine will cause its accuracy to go wild. When shooting at distant enemies, you can fire in short bursts, or even better, 
add small pauses between shots to maintain perfect accuracy. The sergeant already told you how much he loves the M1 Garand. Everything he said is true. It's reliable, accurate, easy to reload, and easy to aim. Of all the semi-automatic rifles in your arsenal, the Garand has the highest stopping power. Its only real drawback is the low magazine size. The on-block clip only holds eight rounds, but it auto-adjusts quickly for a fast reload. The STG-44. The lethality of this weapon frightens me. If you see a German with one, my advice is to take cover immediately. The STG-44 is the best in class for mid-range. It's capable of very long bursts, but accuracy can go wild when firing the entire magazine. While not ideal for them, all very fast. The STG-44 will still work wonders in the right hands. The MP-40, a deadly German submachine gun. It has a slower firing rate than the American M1A1, but in the right hands, it can be more lethal. The MP-40 has reliable accuracy and a slightly larger magazine. But, it has the lowest rate among all automatic weapons. However, the MP-40 doesn't go wild like other automatic weapons do when firing the entire magazine at once. That's why the Germans love it. The M1A1 submachine gun. The weapon of choice for many American officers. 30 bullets in the magazine. Among the weapons in the conventional arsenal, the M1A1 has the quickest firing rate and causes the highest damage. But it has the lowest accuracy. Even when held two-handed, spraying the entire magazine at once will cause the weapon to go wild is best for mid-range enemies. For long-range enemies, using a different weapon is strongly recommended. You might find one of these spear guns on board a U-boat. Your ammunition will be limited, but it only takes one spear per enemy. And you have the advantage of retrieving and reusing spears you've already shot. It's also, from what I'm told, good against sharks. Yes, the Panzer Faust, a disposable anti-tank weapon with an extremely potent warhead. You need both hands to use it, but it packs quite a punch. The warhead's trajectory will arc when fired over a long distance, so adjust your aim accordingly. The Panzer Shrek. It's the German equivalent to the American bazooka and works very much the same way. While its blast shield can protect you from enemy fire, it can obscure your view of the target. And that's why, when it comes to bazookas, I prefer American. The 
American M9A1 bazooka. Now, as they say, you're cooking with gas. Normally, this weapon takes two people to operate, but with some practice, you'll be able to use it all by yourself. While the bazooka is too big to holster, it packs quite a punch. Reload it from the rear after every shot. Sometimes you just need a shotgun and nothing else will do. At close range, this weapon has no peer. Perfect for clearing corridors and bunkers. You have to pump the shotgun after every shot. Try doing it with one hand by making a brisk up and down motion. With some practice, you'll be able to pump your shotgun with one hand while throwing a grenade with the other. Germans will run in fear and speak your name in whispers. This special weapon is on loan from Colonel Ebbets. Apparently it's a family heirloom. He calls it Uncle Nate's Rough Rider. I call it an exquisite Nazi killing machine. It can be fired entirely one-handed, with only minimal impact accuracy. And it's the only rifle in your arsenal that can be reloaded entirely one-handed. While slightly less lethal than a bolt-action rifle, it's deadlier than any semi-automatic. The rough rifle is best for mid to long-range combat. It can be slam fired by holding it two handed while keeping the trigger squeezed. Just remember to cock the lever after every shot. Mark II Fragmentation Grenade. You already reacquainted yourself with these on the firing range, but practice makes perfect. Remember, once you pull the pin, the fuse starts burning. You have five seconds until it explodes. Potato, potato. The German hand grenade's oblong shape prevents it from rolling around like an American Mark II. Activate its fuse by pulling the cap at the bottom. Remember, you can use your teeth or your hands. Packed tight with explosives, the gammon grenade is a small bomb. Using this weapon carries a lot of risk, but the reward is a massive instantaneous explosion at the point of impact. It will explode on any surface, including a Nazi. After the cap is pulled, the gammon grenade can be held indefinitely. But now that it's armed, there's no going back. Make absolutely sure you throw it far enough, otherwise you will have a very bad day.
M1918A2 automatic rifle. While it has its trade-offs, it's one of the big stars of the American arsenal. It can only be fired two-handed, and even then, accuracy is low. But my goodness, does it make up for it with incredible stopping power. Using the higher firing rate setting reduces accuracy even further, but it sends rounds downrange much faster. Put the weapon into turret mode by deploying its bipod. Once it's stabilized, you get amazing accuracy. For covering corridors, or even taking out enemies at long distance. Get on the move again by grabbing its offhand grip. G42. Normally, it takes a team to operate effectively, but with some practice, you'll be able to do it solo. The MG42 is extremely accurate and holds a massive 250 round magazine with an incredible 12 minute firing rate. Parallel lethality. to be